Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Okay, so, as you can see on the screen, wherever they are, um, there's a, a critical critical success going on for your sneaky sneaky. So, um, because it was a critical success, you're seeking away for a firefight that you already just caused a, a disruption of, um, of uh, their communications by playing some horrible uh, earth music layered over each other, uh, making, like, white noise of death. Uh, describe to me your tactic for sneaking out. I want you, because you're, you're, you know, it's like a middle area of the citadel and whatnot. You know there's a firefight going on, and there's bodies dropping, and there's civilians getting injured, uh, or whatever. I blame Monterey for that, but, um, you, can you, um, uh, describe to me your sneaking away. What, what's your tactic? I try to use the nooks and crannies, like the lesser traveled paths of the citadel. I probably even use some keeper tunnels, actually, if that's possible. I imagine with, like, the, the critical success, I might be able to. Like try and use that and like get away to where CSEC won't be able to reach me quite so, quickly because um, immediately, much like uh, in Star Wars, immediately you see a grate next to you and you know that this grate leads into a keeper tunnel. You whip out your shotgun, you're just like Ch -ch -ch boom, Ch -ch -ch boom, and you like j you kick the thing in and you like hop into the keeper tunnel and you start like uh, run sliding along it because there's a bit of a slope but you know you're running down it maybe lose your footing at one point because you're not the most dexterous person and you slide a bit at the end it's not the, the not the safest thing you've ever done but hey you got the fuck out and that's what matters um uh as you kind of like get into the bottom and you turn to the corner uh you do hear some you hear voices from up top you're like hey where'd it go oh maybe you went down here and you turn the corner and you see like um uh, so they didn't notice you at first they weren't able to immediately follow you you got a good distance before they came to the realization of what was happening when you get down to the bottom uh you turn the corner you go running up and you see there's another grate in the way this clearly is a much higher quality one one that you're not going to be able to just shoot open but it has a panel you're going to have to hack into that panel to, to get through. Please. Mind you, you're doing this rushed. This is actually rushed because you have pressure from behind you. Um, I'm not going to give you the minus two because you did a good enough stealth to buy you uh, a gap of time. But they're coming quick. No minus two yet. All right. I'm going to apply Omni Gel to get a plus one on this. So Ooh. that's a plus five in total. So more or less what you do, just to uh, explain it uh, for Aaron or anybody else, you take this like uh, this goopy material that can actually like be uh, molecularly um, like altered to become hard objects, things like Omni Blades and stuff like that are made out of Omni Gel. You more or less take this goop that's also extremely um, uh, conductive and you kind of go and like goop it onto the device that you're trying to uh, manipulate. And because it's extremely conductive and it takes to like the signals that you're sending very well, it allows you to like eep into the circuitry and manipulate things on a far mm. better level than you could otherwise. So it's almost space like- work magic. Yeah. Space magic. It's like 3D magic, uh, sorry, like a 3D mapping of the oh. electronics inside. Go ahead, go. <laughs> you got a 17. Good right now. You got a 17 with a critical success. Cracks, you better watch your back, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Like, I'm like, don't worry, we're going to have, like, opposed roles of you again. getting shot. And he's like, nay, nay. So you not only squirt the gel on there and pop the lock open as easy as you can, when you go inside and turn around and shut the door behind you, you use that Omni Gel to, uh, to like, hard lock the thing so that, one, you relock the doors and uh, add your own, like, algorithms and firewalls and then make it harder to hack into. But two, you actually uh, molecularly alter the Omni Gel to no longer be a superconductor, but instead to be um, uh, a super resistor. So it makes it even harder to hack into uh, because the Omni Gel is, like, uh, disrupting signals getting in. So fuck off, Rick. And so now you're inside, and this is the crazy part, because I actually set the DC extremely high. You're inside a keeper area. Like, you're, because you specifically said you wanted to get on the keeper tunnels. You're inside of a keeper area. So when you turn around, you kind of like go walking in. You see, like, almost immediately seven or eight keepers working on, like, different types of terminals, computers, or whatever down here. You've never seen anything like this. First of all, you, you've seen like three keepers at once before. Let's start. What is a keeper and Sp what do they do? Spread out across the entire Presidium all over. Like you can look around hard and barely see three of them spread out super far. What is a keeper? 
An alien. Where do they come from? Good question. What do they do? Who knows? What is known that they do is they upkeep the cit uh, the uh, the citadel. They make sure that it's clean. If a dead body's there, it isn't taken away by CSEC, the keepers will come and take it away. Um, uh, if an area is left dirty for too long, the keepers clean it up. Uh, if something is broken and other people can't seem to fix it, the keepers come by and fix it. Like, but what do they do? What do they eat? How do they, what are they, where do they? Nobody knows. To this day, nobody knows. And one of the main reasons is you can't really get into the keeper underbelly areas. Some people have to do a little bit of a documentary. They don't stay for very long. Um, nobody knows why. But here you are in a place that you they shouldn't be. They also dissolve when they die, so you can't even do like a... Genetic testing on them or anything. Yep. Yeah. So, so uh, you, even like their, if you peel off parts of their flesh... Uh, if it's not connected to their body, again, the it's like the DNA or whatever they their physiology uses to comprise themselves dissolves. So, you torture one. That's, uh... um, Can I roll a connect check to reach out to my buddy from Mass Effect 1, like the end of the game? Uh, which buddy? <laughs> the big one. Hold on, wait. You're missing the reference. It's, it's, a, it's a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. We're referring to Mass Effect 1, the video game? Yes. Yeah, I thought Ma you meant season. One. I meant, I thought like, you meant season one. I was like, uh, you didn't yeah. Any you, you, you're referring to Sovereign. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So sorry. I was trying to keep it non-spoilery, but you know. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to call in Sovereign to fuck this shit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, anyways, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, oh, yes, Reapers. What's a Reaper? <laughs> Reaper. Are those the things from Firefly? No. So, um, you make your, you're down there and you look around and you see, like I said, six or seven of them just like right there working on consoles, consoles like you've never seen before. That's very, very strange and how they interact with them and whatnot, like the way that their tentacles almost like reach into areas like their, their, um, uh, claws, my apologies, their hands like reach into areas and it's like they communicate just by straight touch with the console itself is a very, very strange circumstance. They don't seem to notice you. At least as of right now, they don't seem to notice you. Cool. I'm going to stay out of their way. I'm just going to try and, like, with the mental map that I have of how the Citadel, like, coexist, I'm going to try and... Actually, I'm going to try and interface, or at least glance at one of those terminals, see if any of them has, like, a map or a schematic of, like, these keeper tunnels. There is a, some sort of visual display happening on the terminals there. Um, however, the visual display is like hard flashes of colors and uh and shapes but no like not even like uh binary or code or uh or, or like anything that's anything that you can like intellectualize anything that you can understand and when i say hard flashes of colors i mean it's rapidly stroping through colors uh so quickly it's actually dizzying uh to look at it's one of those like ooh, don't stare too long you, you know seize out um, and like I said, there's various shapes or whatnot that kind of like pop in almost seemingly random patterns inside there too. The keepers are both staring at it and interacting with it as it's like doing this thing that you yourself just cannot understand or read. All right. Knowing like, I'm probably very well aware of how like the Citadel layout is. I'm going to try and use that to my uh, advantage to try and just like find keeper tunnels that go away from where CSEC's trying to bust me. So you're trying to map your way through here. Uh, mapping is going to be a uh, survive intelligence check for you. So you're welcome to make your uh, your survive intelligence check. Okay. So you're actually doing a decent job uh, of trying to uh, manipulate your way through there. You know, pulling up like we can't. The problem is like the keeper tunnels do not run perfectly with everything else. Like they, they do not see. It's like one of those. Every once in a while you get to an area, you get a little ping of signal. Uh, coming from the Citadel and you're like, oh, where am I? Like, uh, And you can see yourself on like a Citadel map, but like off the map. And you're like, oh, I did not expect to pop out here. But now that I'm here, I'm going to go like this way and this should work out pretty well. Uh, can you do me a favor? Roll me another survive intelligence check. And where, where are you heading towards? Somewhere seedy. Somewhere that I could possibly like disappear into the crowd without standing. I was like, oh, this is Kato Olan, once a terrorist, mm -hmm. which seems to be a common thing with everyone around here lately. Uh, 
Rick, you are crushing it today, sir. You are crushing it today. So uh, yeah, yeah. you are you are able to make your way over to, once again, you're kind of like ping up on a map and you're like, oh, sweet. I'm actually over by uh, where the really bad areas are in the, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't even have the dice on screen. Uh, this is really bad for me. Let me uh, get that up there for everybody else. You can see the dice, but you can't see the uh, results. There we go. So, um, uh, the CD, uh, so you, to the CD area, the underbelly where, um, uh, what is it? Flux is the, the, uh, the bar down there, all that kind of area where you've spent time before. You can see that you're getting near it. You're just trying to find a way out of the tunnels. Unfortunately, at one point in time, you're walking through the tunnels and the tunnel is so tight and you're trying to get your way through it. And you hear like, and you're like, what is that? Oh shit, there's a there's a keeper coming my way and you're like I got to go that way. It's coming this way. Uh what do I do? What's your your plan in this situation? This far they haven't interacted with you at all. I suspect that if I try to like obstruct their duties and like become an obstruction in their tunnels, that's not going to go over well. I'm going to back up a little bit, try and find a nook that I could possibly like score myself into. Slarians aren't that big. Or hell, even just like climb up to like the roof and like wedge myself between the walls just to be able to let him pass. Sure. So you're going to, so because of the fact that it's kind of like a, a tight tunnel that it is uh, making its way through, crawling its way through, and there really are no nooks because it's such a long tunnel going back, you're like, oh shit, I'm actually going to have to have you roll for me. Uh, you're going to have a couple options here. One of them is going to be an exert strength check to do, like you were saying, kind of like pin yourself out of its way. Uh, another one is going to be an exert dexterity check to kind of like slink off to the side and, and once again stay out of its way. Uh, the last one is going to be if you want to run straight back and get out of its way so you don't like, just kind of like outrun this thing coming up so you can stay out of its way. You don't want to interact with it because you're being cautious. I don't think I don't think Cattle's scared, but he's being cautious because he's in an unknown situation. Uh, you can exert con if you wanted to sprint back. I'm going to go exert dex and hide in a nook yep. if possible. Try to like Stay the fluff out of the way. Yeah. Get it? Oh, there we go. Again, not terrible. So uh, what you do is you actually do the best you can to like kind of, you know, move to an area that feels a little bit wide or whatever. You kind of like watching its pattern of its walking. And you try to like slink out of the way. Uh, it does walk by. And as it walks by, it does actually like bump into you. And it uh, uh, nudges you. And, but it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop to like regard you or anything like that. It continues moving along, but it does in fact bump into you. Um, uh, yeah, so that happens. Ooh. I and give him a courteous nod and I go on my way again. Yeah, it's like one of those. Like, sorry. Like yourself. And, uh, and keep on moving. So you make your way down to the other end of the tunnel. And once again, you're still trying to find your way out and into the bar. Do you want to try to find an, in, like a, a bit of an innocuous, like a, a not so obvious way back out? Like, okay, a grate that leads out there, a keeper tunnel that leads out. Or do you want to like, no, this vent is good enough, blast it open and hop down into the middle of a crowd? No, I'm definitely trying to be sneaky about it. I will also be keeping an eye on my uh, on my map, by the way, to see if I get any pinks for location from the other people. Sure, 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 sure. Um, and you're gonna roll me a survive intelligence check again to kind of like map out where it is that you're you're heading to to get a sneaky way out. So it takes you some time to uh, to map your way out, and during that time, uh, you actually notice another uh, keeper kind of like walking up towards you. You do like you've been doing the entire time and you try to like stay out of its way or whatever. But this one actually seems to be like as you move out of the way, it like changes its direction and it seems to be walking towards you. And that's like the first time this, this has happened where it's like it notices you and it's like coming at you. Uh, what do you what do you do? It doesn't seem to be like running at you or aggressively doing it. It's walking at you the same way it walks anywhere. It's just, you know, I'm that trying to. It's got a reason to follow me. I don't want it to have a reason to follow me. I'm going to try, like, I'll double down on my efforts to get out of here now. Um, sure. So, um, uh, so by doubling down your efforts, you are obviously, you already rolled your, your survive checks because you're trying to, like, to find your way out. And you're like, I think I found a spot. 
Shit, this was a, wasn't a good one. All right, hold on. Let me check this area over here. I'm pretty sure there's a good uh, tunnel out this way. God damn it, this was a tunnel out, but they built a wall in front of it, and they put a, you know, a, a, an establishment on the other side, the motherfuckers. So this tunnel doesn't work, and you're trying to find another one out. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm imagining um, the movie Little Monsters. I think that's what it's called. And you're trying to climb out from under the bed before it's too late, but, you know, it's like, no, this one's already closed off. Keep running. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. Um, no. eventually they climb out from underneath a lawn, uh, a lawn chair or a beach chair on a beach in like California. Like, yeah, we found the spot before the sun came up. We got out. Woohoo. Um, great movie. Moving on. So, uh, you're trying to find a, a, a tunnel that actually leads out, but this keeper is, is following you very obviously. So, so, uh, what's your doubling down efforts? What's your, uh, describe kill it <laughs> no that i won't kill it if i don't have to and me three they they took bodies and gave them to the reapers it's evil yeah but i don't know they wouldn't help me call sovereign so i don't know exactly. <laughs> uh i'm gonna just like if I'm in an area that I think I'm relatively clear in, I might just Omniblade and, like, try to get through a vent or whatever. Okay, sure. So it's one of those screw the subtle plan and go for a more direct plan? Yes. I'll still try to aim for, like, a quiet spot, but I'll definitely use my Omniblade instead of, like, the shotgun, which everybody will hear in a loud, in a far radius and be like, oh my god, that's a shotgun. I'll allow you to roll me Instead, I'll just hear a swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. I'll allow you to roll me a survival with a plus two because you you care less about the subtlety. I'm going to use a point from the pool of luck at this point. I've been pushing it. Thanks, Silencio, for all of those points. <laughs> you are amazing, sir. Just for more cattle. So you do come across an area that you're like, uh, this thing is coming at me, and actually at this point in time, you see, fuck, did another one just join it and walking after me? Am I being followed by two of these keepers that are seemingly harmless, but really creepy to look at? Uh, am I being followed by two keepers right now? So uh, you finally like, no, I, I, I gotta get out of here. This is a little too much. So you make your way over to uh, an area where you're like, oh God. This is kind of out in the open. People are going to be able to see me coming from the grates, but I, I need to I need to get out. And so you bust out like... Ch -ch -ch -ch. You, does your weapon have an Omni Blade? I got an Omni Blade on the uh, the black slab or from okay. Entree. So you uh, bust out the Omni Blade on this thing, and you're trying to like cut cut it down. So to cut the thing through, you can do me a um, it'd be an Omni Blade strength check. Oh, good. Yep. You're putting scratches into it. Keep going. Hey. Um, you're actually putting gouges into the metal that's there, trying to cut through it. Keep going. Uh, and you're getting significantly more progress. Uh, the thing is almost broken through, and the reaper, the creepers, the keepers, are right behind you. How far away are they at this point? Uh, very, very, very close. Like, they're going to get up to you whether or not you make this roll. Okay, yeah, I'm going to uh, use a point from the pool of luck then at this point. Oh, for God's sake, I'm going to re-roll that one. Oh, yeah, you can do that. I can't. It, it's a combat roll, technically, so. No, it's not. Unless this, you... is, this is a skill check, not an attack roll. Okay, in that case. <laughs> Marginally better. So you do actually cut the thing open, but it takes you a bit more time of hacking and slashing at it. The keepers come up behind you, and they actually start grabbing at you with their, their little claw things, their little, um, uh, like, pincers. We're going to be uh, processed. Start grabbing at you and clawing at you. Uh, because it's <laughs> grabbing at you and clawing at you, you're going to have to try to get away from this. Uh, you have two options here. You can make an exert strength check or you can make an evasion save. One of those options. Exert what again? Exert strength or evasion. To kind of like pull yourself free or like 
wiggle free before, or jump free right before they get you. I don't know. I don't think I've ever made a save, so. Well, you know. I'm probably going to go for the exert strength. Cool thing, cool thing about saves, you can add a pool of luck after you roll it. Yeah, well, that is a, that is a tempting argument. Let's roll the dice. Yeah. That's uh, doable. That's actually doable. You only need three more. That's a 1d6? Yeah, it's a 1d6. So add it and take another one from the pool of luck. Hey! Yeah. Hey! So I don't get processed into Reaper food! This is what happens. You start trying to climb out of the Keeper Tunnel, and as you start trying to climb out, all of a sudden, like, one of the Keeper pincer, thing, uh, pincer Claws grab you, and starts pulling you back in. You're like, hey! Get off of! Let go! And you, like, try to pull free, and people are, like, actually watching you uh, get away. And you're like, no! And you, like, wriggle for a minute, and you, like, hit the thing in the hand, and pull free enough that you wiggle out, and you're able to, like, come out of the tunnel, and the, the Keeper comes out after you, like it was trying to grab you, but once it kind of like comes out of the tunnel for like even a moment, it just like stops and immediately turns around and goes back in. And then uh, the other one uh, has already been picking up the grate and it's already starting to try to like repair the grate and fix the thing that's behind there. And a whole bunch of people around you just witnessed a keeper grabbing at you and trying to pull you in, or they think that's what they saw, or maybe that's what you may try to see. It was weird. It was like nobody's ever seen a keeper interact with a person ever in the history of ever, at least for these people, right? And they just saw that. So it was one of those like really, really, really weird circumstances. Um, uh, what do you do now that you're kind of in front of a bunch of people that might know your face or might not know your face? How does Cattle handle the situation? I dust myself off. <laughs> and just go like, what? You never see a man try to get away from his gambling debts before? And just walk off. All right. You don't need a roll for that. It's totally believable. Um, all right. So you um, you go walking away from these random nobodies. Where are you walking to? Anywhere that I can, like... I might actually check for my connections because I do have some shady connections. And I want to find a place where I can lay low for a bit now. This place is fucking hot. Okay. You can roll me a connection check. And then we're going to pull the camera to everybody else. Okay, so um, uh, you use your connections to try to like reach out and grab out to some people and whatnot. And now we're going to pull the camera to everybody else. 